Okay, today I'm going to be going over how to solve the noisy pendulum with white noise. Some things that I'd like to note beforehand is I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with how to solve a second order differential equation. The second thing I'd like to note is that this variable here is our Brownian motion, our Weiner process, and it is nowhere differentiable despite being denoted as such. This is the you know definition of our uh, Weiner process but for reasons that will be obvious in a moment we're going to be denoting it in this form. Okay so solving this differential equation like we would any other. And that's going to give us that the solution to the homogeneous part of our equation is this. Now, I'm going to set this equal to u1, this equal to u2. We're going to use a method called variation of parameters. So I'm going to use what's called the Ron scan, which is a determinant. I'm going to set this cosine alpha t in the upper left corner, and then this sine alpha t in the upper right. I'm going to take the derivative of both of these. And like with every other determinant, we multiply this times this, subtract it by this times this. So that the value of our Ron scan is just alpha. To find the particular solution, we're going to be using this formula. where our g is this sigma times our Brownian motion. So our u1 is cosine and our u2 is sine. Again, the value of our Ron scan is alpha. The value of our g is the right-hand side of our ODE. Now I'm going to rewrite this like that. I'm going to pull out the sigma and I'm going to pull out the alpha. Okay, from here I'm going to cancel out this dt with that one, this one with that one. Again, from ODEs, the general solution be the homogeneous part plus the particular part, where this is the particular solution. And we very quickly derived the homogeneous solution in the beginning of the video. This is our general solution here. Um, if we want to, we can factor it out further to make it look a little nicer. There you go. Now, to get rid of these constants here, we would need some initial conditions. 
Uh, that's something that you can look up on your own. Okay, so now we're gonna take the expectation and the variance of our general solution here. But before we do that, uh, we're gonna wanna set up our work so that it's easier for us to calculate later on. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be setting this here equal to V1, this here equal to V2. That, okay. So V1, V2, And what we're gonna be doing here is taking the expectation of V1, the expectation of V2. And you might ask how to do this. So what we're gonna be doing is exploiting a property of Ito integrals, or in this case, these are Weiner integrals because these um, functions here do not have any uh, dependency on Brownian motion, or they don't have any white noise. Thus, we're going to be using this first property here. But in our case, it doesn't have any white noise. And in that case, the expectation operator essentially just disappears. So we're left with that these are both zero. To calculate the variance of E1, let's write down the formula here. And again, expectation, Weiner integral is zero. Zero squared is zero. So we're left with just calculating this part here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna square this And we're going to apply this second rule, E2 isometry rule. And again, this expectation operator is essentially just going to disappear. So that's the variance of V1. For V2, So here we have variance of V1, here we have variance of V2, and finally we're going to take the covariance of V1 and V2. And of course again they have zero mean so we're just going to be calculating this part here. And again, these two are essentially the same thing. And the expectation operator will once again disappear so that we have and this is the covariance of V1 and V2. Okay, moving on to actually calculate what we came here to do, the expectation of our general solution here, which is the expectation of this function here. So the reason that we are going to get the following answer is, again, because this 
has expectation zero, and so does this. So this is going to give us the homogeneous part of our general solution. To find the variance, of the entire general solution, it will be as if we are calculating the variance of the particular solution. And the reason for that is because these here do not have uh, white noise. So we can just factor it out of the uh, expectation operator. For instance, if we have this, this just gives us t. And so if we're trying to take the, the variance of t, what we have is this. We have thus when we go to take the variance of this, it's just going to give us zero. So we don't need to waste time taking the variance of that. We will only be taking the variance of the particular part of our solution or the particular solution. So then let's go ahead and take the expectation of the particular solution. This is the variance of our general solution. This is a long one. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe. If you like stochastic calculus content, you know, give me a like and a subscribe. I'll keep on doing this stuff. It, it is pretty time consuming uh, to make uh, stochastic calculus content uh, just because it is so technical and I'd like to do it in a way that looks nice and hopefully is easy to follow. So if you do like the content, go ahead and leave me a comment. See ya.